this is a one of the most interesting periods in all of music, and I've always been fascinated by the the fact that within such a short time, so much new was being being born and kind of uh, developed into uh, lots of different directions, and not only within music, but but also in literature, visual arts, um, applied arts. There's so much going on in this one place and at that one time that it's almost a miracle. And I don't think there is any other place or time in history that would quite compare. And for a couple of decades, there are no rules. The fact that we have these two masterpieces as bookends of the series is, of course, a symbol uh, for the journey. You can very clearly see where it's coming from, and, and you can easily hear and discern the, the diagonals from, from all the great predecessors, the Beethovens and the, the Mozart and, Mozart's and Haydn's and Schubert's and so on and so forth. You can follow how the language becomes, how the principal, principles of, of musical language dissolve first and then something new crystallizes out of this uh, um, sort of liquid um, state. And I think this is one of the most fascinating processes in, in all of music, to see what, how the old becomes the new. The guiding principle in these programs is not necessarily a, a didactic one. I'm not trying to teach anybody anything in particular. Uh, it's about music. I, I, I put together works that I love deeply, uh, I admire, uh, and that have, an, have a very profound and, and powerful effect on me. It's a very mysterious thing why Schoenberg still poses this problem. Um, but in all honesty, I have to say that the ugliest Schoenberg pieces are formidably ugly. They really are. Uh, and, and they possess this kind of um, very impressive ugliness that you cannot ignore. It's not like some pimple on the skin. It's, it's like, an, like a crocodile in your bedroom. You really cannot ignore it. It's right there. And it's rather dangerous and it eats you up if you're not careful. When you think of the best works of Schoenberg, they are as good as anybody's best works. And, and in, in his very best music, he's, he's a visionary, deeply uh, emotional, very exciting composer. I would say that Kurlida is a, a particularly fascinating piece when you think of the journey of Schoenberg. You know, this was a, a, a bank clerk, uh, and he envisioned the, the hugest <laughs> piece of repertoire in the classical canon. And I, I'm, it's terribly touching and moving to think about this. I never forget the first time I heard Kurlider in, in, in a concert. Never ever, as long as I live. Uh, and the the moment when the chorus comes in for the first time, this sort of almost animal scream that, that the men produce, it, I practically fell off the chair. And then, even now, I, I've conducted it uh, a few times, and uh, I'm always anticipating that very moment when the chorus comes in, because it's such a fantastic, dramatic moment. It starts from a very sort of post, post, post uh, Wagnerian uh, place, Straussian place, and and as it took such a long time for him to, for him to complete, it ends up 
on a completely different planet. And all this happens within one piece of music. And you would think that uh, the music wouldn't hang together. It would just fall apart in, in terms of form and expression, but it doesn't. Somehow, despite the fact that Schoenberg is already saying goodbye to lots of principles that were the guiding principles of music up, up until that point, there's something about his personality which is so powerful that, that whatever he does always is Schoenberg and therefore somehow belongs together. And this is the, the mystery and miracle of Gurlieder. The second string quartet starts off as any old post-romantic chamber music piece. It's very good music, but there's nothing special about it. And, and then the quartet starts going to places where music hadn't been going to. He somehow hits the limits of the medium of the string quartet and decides to add a soprano to this. The soprano, the first line the soprano sings is this very famous line, Ich fühle Luft von anderen Planeten. I feel air from other planets. This sort of marks the beginning of a very, very uh, fascinating and extraordinary period in, in Schoenberg's production. The sort of free atonal uh, music that for me is among the most extraordinary music ever written by anybody. And my own guiding principle in terms of putting all this music together has been the idea that what moves me uh, is very likely to move a lot of other people. Uh, what I find exciting uh, is very likely to have the same effect on, on other people as well, because we are not that different. And, and I, I believe that at the end of the day, uh, there's something universal about a deep musical experience. Um, so the guiding principle here is that I think that these are wonderful compositions <laughs> and, and among the best compositions ever written by anybody. And that's why we want to perform them. <laughs>